Hey everyone, I hope you guys are doing fine. So today I'm going to show you how I'm going to repair my very very old um, time capsule. So if you're just here to watch me tear things apart and put it back together uh, and have no idea what a time capsule is, a time capsule is essentially a router and a network attached storage. So Apple don't make this anymore because I think they, this is not their core business and they want to move everyone to iCloud. So nevertheless, I've been using this since uh, 2011, 2012. And it was a really good solution for me to uh, easily back up my Mac. And hard disks are not meant to last forever. So over the past few years, I can see that the hard disk is failing. I can still read the contents, but I cannot write new data onto the hard disk anymore. So after watching several videos and reading several articles online, I felt confident enough to do this myself. And I want to document the process in case the videos may have missed out any of the details. So if you're here to learn about how to replace the hard disk in your time capsule, hopefully this video will give you some confidence. It's not that difficult. In total, it took me about 30 minutes. So the first thing I want to do is to get a hair dryer and heat the base thoroughly. This is to heat up and soften the glue that Apple uses. After that, carefully pry off the rubber base. Do it very slowly and gently. In my experience, I try to do it as slowly as I can. Even then, I still manage to tear some parts of it. So go really slow and make sure you use a hair dryer evenly on the base. So after about 3 minutes of heating, I can slowly start to peel off the base. I start from the corner and slowly work my way through the rest of the base. And whenever I have difficulty prying the base off, I will try to use the hair dryer to heat it up a bit before I continue. So eventually I managed to pry the base off, but as you can see, I made a tear in the base, even though I was really careful about it. It is still quite okay because once you assemble it back, you can't really see the line and this whole thing is at the bottom anyway. So the next thing you want to do is to get a screwdriver and start unscrewing all the screws. I'll link you to the article online where I found the tutorial. You do not have to unscrew all the screws, so be sure to follow the article's illustration. So one mistake I made here is that I missed out one of the screws, but luckily for me, I was trying to open this very gently, so I didn't break anything before I realized that I actually missed out one screw. So once I realized that I missed out one screw, I quickly removed it, and once that is done, the metal base can be lifted off. So when you do that, be careful because there is a fan underneath, so be sure not to tuck the wire. And then the next thing you want to do is to get a tweezer and gently remove the temperature sensor. This step is quite straightforward, you just need to be very careful with it, so I'm going to fast forward this part. So be sure not to lose this plastic clip, put it aside safely. So now you can just grab the hard disk by the side and slowly lift it out. At the same time, you can also detach the two cables at the top. So you can see that this is a very generic 3.5 inch hard disk by Western Digital, uh, co-branded with Apple. This is a 2TB version. And so today we're going to upgrade this to a 3TB version, also by Western Digital. The tank capsule model that I'm using here is A1409. I understand that the previous models of tank capsule may not take in all brands. I'm not so sure about this model, I haven't tested it out extensively. But if you would just follow the model that I bought, it should be fine. The installation is pretty much the reverse steps of what I've shown earlier. One more thing that you need to do is to remove these two metal poles from the old hard disk and transfer it to the same location onto the new hard disk. Just make sure that you install it at the correct position. Over here in this video, this is the wrong demonstration. So once that's done, you can install back the temperature sensor onto the new hard disk. And then it's just a matter of closing back the lid carefully and screwing back all the screws. And lastly, you can place back the rubber base and use a hairdryer to heat up the glue again so that it will stick to the base. And that's it, you're done. Congratulations. So once you plug back everything, you turn on the time capsule, go to Airport Utilities on your Mac, select your time capsule and click Edit. And then under the Disk tab, click Erase Disk and click Erase. Click Continue. And then after a while, the orange light will turn green and that means you're all good to go. And now when I access my time capsule, it says 3TB, which means this is a success. So thank you for watching and I hope this video helped you. And I will see you the next time. Thank you for watching.